Good morning, folks. Today, there are so many incredible topics, I don't know which one to make the top story. As an antidote to that shortcoming, we're just going to do them all. But let's get started, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. You might have noticed filaments incoming on the limb during the opening sequence. That's all there is to see, as our star is utterly quiet. The solar wind is still calming down considerably, indicating that the next coronal hole stream has not yet arrived, and we're quiet at Earth's magnetic field for now. That topic is a big one coming up in just a few minutes. Here you see the turning dark coronal hole that will impact us almost certainly today. Well, how about earthquakes? We're zoomed in on part of the map that kicked off the day yesterday. Orange alerts are focused today as they are almost always magnitude restricted up to 6.3, one of the more difficult things to peg down. And while well, exactly that, a 6.3 struck the central Mediterranean right on the orange arrow. This was not picked up by any agency on Earth, but it remains on the list this morning, and they almost always take off bad readings within a few hours. Being 370 kilometers deep, it was a blot echo, so Europe went on red alert. But hours later, in the newly orange region in the Middle East, another 6.3 struck in southern Pakistan. There are no injuries, and while this one counts for our statistics, since nobody picked up the Mediterranean event, we cannot count it in our successes. Just note it for yourself. The Disaster Prediction app is where to find the Earthquake Alert maps, first button, first page. Since regular everyday updates and forecasts, the system is holding at 84% success rate with 10 to 20% fault coverage. This is 10% higher success rate than we expected in those scenarios. It's available for Apple and Android, and we're moving on now while we're discussing earthquakes. I would love to share with you some of the private members' content from suspiciousobservers.org. It's from just a little bit earlier this year. January 11th, we're answering the question about whether an earthquake uptick had been taking place. Hey folks, I cannot tell you the number of comments and emails asking why there are so many earthquakes recently, and that's what we'll talk about here. This is the SDO AIA 211 starting from the beginning of November 2016 up to now. What you should notice is that coronal holes are showing up much more often than they did at both of the most recent solar maximum and minimum periods. I remember getting excited to see a trans-equatorial coronal hole coming into view. That was many years ago. Now we're seeing it every week, sometimes twice a week. Of course, if you have come this far, you have got to know that coronal holes are our number one earthquake factor. When they face Earth, we get upticks in seismicity. And what do you see here over the last few months? Nearly constant coronal hole activity. That's it. No physics degree required. We've got a coronal hole bonanza on the sun, and the lithosphere is taking the brunt of it, especially given the lack of geomagnetic storms. Our second paper, published in 2015 in New Concepts in Global Tectonics, has a lot more on how coronal holes are affecting earthquakes. What is happening right now might be a sharp signal of our descent into another grand solar minimum. Rather than looping back into the circuit, the IMF is dominant over the coronal and umbral magnetic fields, and connections to planets and comets are more prevalent. This leaves less energy at our star and more distributed to the planets via coronal holes, their fields, and EM output. To truly get a picture of what we're seeing, let's flatten out the sun into a rectangular infinity chart. You see that we're watching a major coverage anomaly in the northern opening, extending down and taking over much of the northern hemisphere of the sun as opposed to mostly being confined to the polar region. This is a little understood signal of the well-documented north-south magnetic asymmetry on our star. But folks, how significant is this recent uptick in activity? To be sure, we have had a flurry as fall turned to winter, but as you look at the entire last year, just the last year, you see that we don't have to go back far to find similar behavior. August is impressive in the higher magnitudes, and April actually outpaced December. We're halfway through January already, two magnitude 6.5s and one magnitude 7, looking like we peaked and will be coming back down. At least we can hope, right? Thanks for watching, and remember, the number one earthquake factor won't leave us alone right now, and Many of you are asking why we've had so many big quakes. Maybe time to reread the Corona Hole Earthquake Factors page on QuakeWatch.net. Be safe, everyone. One month later, we're back and seeing how we did. Here are the only four events to qualify for that chart in January, so indeed, 
We hit our peak at the end of last year. We get those peaks once or twice a year, and every time there is indeed a clamoring online about what's going on. In reality, a bit of patience has seen us drop back down to moderate levels of quaking in January, and of course, we still don't have any 6.5s in February. Up next, got to admit, when I told you to go check out the free premium preview page and watch A Planet Crossed, our review of Solar System Chaos and the best candidate for Planet X or Nibiru in the past, I knew I'd be following up the ancient Mars water story with this, a confirmation that solar system planets once went into chaos. I knew because one of the authors is a suspicious observer, and he told me it was coming. Folks, say it with me. It is now well accepted that the giant planets of the solar system did not have these current orbits in the past. Well done, guys. If you didn't go back and watch that free video yesterday on the preview page, gotta do it. Up next, yeah, we knew this was unavoidable heading into yesterday. Tornadoes dropped across Louisiana. They are still trying to fully assess everything that happened damage-wise. And one of the twisters actually came right by and sideswiped the NASA facility, making the hydrogen and oxygen fuel tanks for deep space missions. Some folks got very very lucky, like the driver of this car racing into the parking lot to find shelter, but not so lucky are the owners of those two trucks. Gorgeous front end obliterated by the roof as the big rig is tipping over in the back. Yeah, I'd say the driver got very lucky. There were at least seven tornadoes that hit the state, dozens of injuries, but frankly, that could have been much worse. As that system departs, it creates a preposterous temperature setup to end the week. While it will break above freezing in Canada, they'll be hoping it doesn't tip over below freezing in southern Georgia. Climate extremes, stronger, larger gradients. Last but not least, folks, the internet lit up the last 36 hours with renewed interest in Earth's magnetic reversal. Can't complain, always wanting more focus there, although the article is discussing a paper from a couple years ago now, even though the article and interviews are new. Either way, this topic is even more important than the earthquake forecasting, as tough as that is for me to admit. Please get caught up on the facts at magneticreversal.org and the effects we can track on Earth over at earthchanges.org. Of course, the changing magnetic field of Earth will be a big topic at Observing the Frontier. The full earthquake forecasting method will be presented. We've got more than 30% of the time dedicated to hangouts and discussions, so you have access to all the speakers. The only Observer's in-person event of the year is just a few weeks away. Website members, you got a new Deeper Look episode yesterday. Right now, we've got pressure and radar forecasts, a null school global run, and shots of our star to close. It's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.